Al Rolls is the reporter thrown into the secretive world of the 4X supermodel where nothing is as it seems. Beware the techno monk and steer clear of Professor Coe and his two assistants. Give the senior trader a wide berth and don't expect any sense from the risk manager. Good morning, I'm Professor Code and this is the Forex Supermodel Daily Analysis for, look, there we are, on Monday the 16th of November 2020. The time is 027, 0527, so nearly coming up for half past five um, GMT, London time. Um, the Asian session has finished. We're just starting the European session and our lunchtime will be the start of the US session. So let's get underway then. So um, the last full trading day, which was Friday, which has just happened uh, before the weekend, we had um, the following. So had the dollar, euro, and we had the yen on this side, on the positive side, with the pound. If you put the figures in, it was plus 129 for the pound. The yen was plus 68. The euro was minus 36. And the dollar was minus 161. So this was Friday, the 13th of the 11th. Um, so we had a uh, a negative driver in the dollar and it was opposed it was opposed by the euro the euro was the negative rock the yen was the positive mover and the pound was the positive secondary driver right so um, the last full trading day as I said was it was Friday um, Friday the 13th as it happened now um, these are the flows then for the complete day. Um, the dollar was the opposed negative driver um, and it was generating opposing positive the dollar yes negative driver and it was generating opposing positive flows predominantly into the pound and uh, a little bit into the yen. So uh, that's that what was happening. So flows were coming out of the pound and really going into the, the, the pound and a little bit into the yen. So that capped off um, last week, obviously. Friday was the last trading day of that week. So if we look at the week as a whole, then we, we get this. So last week looked like, uh, just switch pieces of paper. Um, right, so, so last week looked like this. The yen was on the negative side, so was the euro. The dollar was positive and the pound was positive. So if we put the figures in, um, we get plus 304 for the pound. The dollar was plus 150. The euro was minus 35 and the yen was minus 419. Right, so we can see that the yen was the uh, opposed negative driver in this case. And it was opposed by the euro. The euro was the negative rock. The dollar was the uh, positive mover and the pound was the positive secondary driver. So this was from uh, Monday the 9th of the 11th open to Friday close, which is the figures above. So, so if you look at that, you can see, as I said, we can see the yen, the yen was uh, relatively weak. It was driving the market in, a, in an opposed negative manner. The flows were predominantly 
the opposing positive flows were predominantly going into the pound complex um, and to a lesser extent the dollar. The euro was acting as the uh, negative rock so it, it, was, it was being balanced by counter flows um, and so it was staying fairly static in that respect. So um, really last week was characterised by yen weakness and, uh, and pound strength uh, with, with a bit of dollar strength tagged on. So, so far today then, just to the final set of flows which we can look at. So today, yeah, it doesn't, okay, right, today then we've got dollar, euro, yen, uh, and then we've got the pound on the positive side here. On its own. So if you fill in the figures, you've got plus 112, yen is minus 3, euro is minus 28, and the dollar is minus 81. Yep, minus 81. Right, so we can see here we've got um, the pound acting as the unopposed positive driver. So it's the positive driver, and it's unopposed, right? And we've got the yen acting as the negative rock, euro is the negative mover, and the dollar is the negative secondary driver. And that is from, from the opening, uh, which is Monday, today, Monday, um, the 16th, the day today the 11th to about half an hour ago so so looking at that interestingly then so just just to, to get a bit of context then as I said last week we were looking at um, yen strength predominantly sorry yen weakness predominantly and uh, the opposing positive flows were were mainly ending up in the in the GBP complex um, and Moving on to today's flows, um, you can see that we've got a slight shift in, in the action. Um, we've got a, an extreme situation here, albeit a short-term extreme, because it's a relatively um, short data point um, from today's opening till now. But we've got the pound acting as the unopposed positive driver, which means the pound is being um, bid to the uh, exception of everything else all the flows are one way on the pound in in terms of the major complexes um, and the the opposing negative flows are mainly ending up coming out of the dollar and to a lesser extent the euro the yen is uh, the negative rock so that's uh, staying put relatively speaking so um, that's that's our flow information. Uh, what we need to do now is is uh, put it into context and try and work out who's going to uh, be the movers today. So if we look at the the, the data print situation, and we can see that um, well, what we've got here is uh, is we've got tier tier one data mainly uh, that I'm going to be looking at which is the uh, normally viewed as the most relevant data. But uh, anyway, the US retail sales we've got uh, on Tuesday the 17th, which is tomorrow. Um, Bailey uh, and the CAD Brigade are, are giving yet more speeches. As I said, you can't shut, shut up, Bailey. Um, and then Wednesday, uh, we've got um, GBP and CAD CPI. Um, and Friday we've got CAD retail retail sales. Now I know that's that's in a way that's standard analysis. Uh, anyone can look at the economic calendar and say that. But but what we tend to do at the Forex Supermodel is we're looking for things that ne necessarily aren't um, going to be have data prints um, for for clues as to going forward. So you can see the. Um, Basically, who's getting who's getting some action on on the data prints? Well, the AUD's um, pretty active uh, this coming week, um, 
the US, the GB and the CAD. So they're all getting standard uh, default action in, in, in the data prints, be it speeches, tier one data or whatever. But the notable exception is the Euro. So the, the Euro is, is not going to be pushed around directly by um, data prints or meetings. Um, so uh, that, that is what we're looking for uh, as a clue um, in our organisation. And if you go even further forward, um, so you look at the following week, then the Euro really doesn't get any action until, when is it, uh, Monday, uh, no, until the German PMI, which is uh, next, early next week. Germ, German PMI and Euro PMI. So, so the markets like to know um, that, that information because when they're planning their trades, they, they don't want to be upset by, by data prints particularly, unless they've got a good view on the data prints. So the euro is very light this coming week and, uh, and sort of has a, a focus with the German, uh, what is it, uh, the German PMI, so early next week. So, so that's, that's useful to know. So um, what's going to happen today then in our view? Well, um, this situation, as I said, when you get an unopposed um, driver, in this case a positive driver in the pound, it tells you one of two things. It tells you that that's either, in this case because it's positive, it's a, it's a top, so it, so it could be a top, or it tells you that this is the build up of a ramp up in the position. So it's, it's, it's an indicator of further strength in that situation. Now. Notice that we've had on the week end of uh, the week the weak side of the uh, equation. Last week the euro, uh, the yen was was predominantly weak, but this morning they've decided that the yen wants to be the negative rock. So the yens the yens said, well, we've had enough weakness at the moment, which is interesting, um, and they they're taking it out the, on the dollar. So the dollar. The dollar is at the moment fulfilling the role of of the yen. Um, now, when you look at transmissions, and in this case, we're we're always coming back to this um, equity transmission at the moment. You notice that equities, um, U.S. equities particularly, um, which which we're looking at. So you've got the Nasdaq and the S and P 500. If you remember last week, I thought the S&P was quite vulnerable to, to a drop. It didn't. That tells you all you need to know. Um, so, so equities are, are on the up. Um, normally, when you get uh, an equity up transmission, you get um, weakness in the yen. But we're seeing a little bit of stubbornness here, um, arguably because we've had such, such a fall last week. So... And you normally get um, uh, USD weakness um, with risk on. But, again, the but is you normally get the standard transmission is the, the, um, the dollar yen uh, normally um, is, is on the up in risk on. And what do we have? Uh, so the dollar yen at the moment... Um, dollar yen is uh, minus 17 so so the dollar the dollar is showing weakness even to the yen so so that's something to bear in mind the markets aren't fully locked into this risk on at the moment now so so what's what's our um, what's our summing up of the day then so I'll just make some room here um, so where are we going to stick our stick in? Well, our view then is that this um, this pound uh, situation, whereas last week, remember this, the middle line was all last week. The pound was the the positive secondary driver, so it was it was the, uh, receiving the bulk of the opposing negative flows that were coming out of. Uh, 
the yen and those were turning into positive flows into the pound so it was viewed as the place to go. Uh, now we've now got an extreme so this is the fifth gear in the gearbox now we're, we're now in overdrive on the pound for the morning um, so far so we've got uh, the pound in overdrive uh, picking up tremendous speed um, and as the unopposed positive driver. Now, we don't believe that that is a top, to, to put it into. We believe that um, the most likely thing is this is the start of uh, a ramp up in the pound. Now, the Brexit uh, noise is, is as usual very moody, so uh, and we know that can be swung around, so that's a bit of a caveat. But, um, right, to nail our colours to the mast then, um, Who's going to be of interest today? Well, we think um, basically you want to be looking at um, long pound to a certain degree. Uh, so long pound, long pound yen looks quite favourable, and uh, long pound dollar. So. So long, long the pound yen and long the pound um, dollar off the back of, we believe, um, a rising situation in the pound. Now, if you get, uh, so yen weakness is likely to come from the equity transmission uh, and the dollar weakness, again, also probably from the equity transmission. Um, and that's why, and you need to keep an eye on the uh, the dollar yen in that respect. Um, uh, you're going to get a slightly strange transmission, as, as we said. So, so um, that's that's what we think today. Um, long pound yen and long pound dollar. Um, obviously, you'll need to use uh, you know cents on on entries and all the rest of it. Part two of the um, how to trade the Forex supermodel is going to be out this week, which will be looking at the first phase of our trading, uh, how to trade situations like that. So that's worth a look. Um, and uh, what's going to wreck that situation? Well, what's going to wreck it is if you get um, if you get massive risk off and you get uh, and you get uh, uh, risk off transmissions, so you get a, a a big thump up in the yen uh, and the dollar again. So uh, just be aware of that and, uh, and good luck trading today and uh, thank you very much.